the Twente Binnense is a, um, a large construction project for a, a road south of Stockholm, which is going to be built soon. And we're aiming for as low uh, emissions as possible both in the construction phase but also the impact later on and because of that we're trying together with all the stakeholders to make a roadmap to how to get there not just for this project but also in the future so as a context of that um, we having a, a program today which i'll explain very shortly so just a brief word about myself i'm running uh, one of kth uh, competence centers which is called road to science for uh, 10 years now uh, this is a center which is focusing on innovation in the road industry uh, and which is a very interesting uh, subject, especially today. I'm also a professor in highway engineering and running my own uh, research group and I'm a part of the KTH University board as a member. And my main interests are sustainability and smart infrastructures. Uh, I am especially interested in innovation and the complexity and processes which need to manage the innovation the process so we get there. But from a technical, both a technical and system perspective, and I think we are at a very interesting stage right now in this uh, subject of how to get to our sustainability goals and what needs to be changed. It's not just the technology question anymore. And I enjoy bridging between academia and industry, which is also part of this project. Um, the background of this major project is the picture you see here. Uh, it's a feasibility study which is trying to see if we can together come with the concept from all actors, both the road administration and the industry, on what changes we need to make, what investments we need to make, what needs to be changed in the way we do today. It's not, it's largely about the construction phase, but also investments that need to be made in beforehand, uh, the way we procure and, and all the aspects which are associated with this, but also that should lead up to a zero emission infrastructure on the long run as well. And the aim is a possible demonstration site of the Sutherland uh, Cross Connection, which is, this is the Tverfa Binnesen's English name, uh, which would actually demonstrate this. So there's a lot of, sub, a lot of discussion on this as well. Today's program is longer than today. We have a keynote lecture now, and this is meant to inspire our uh, stakeholders today and later on when we will discuss the keynote in other workshops that are coming up. And this afternoon, we'll have a workshop with a lot of stakeholders to see if we can do a first uh, attempt to a, um, uh, a mapping on how to get there. Having said that, I want to move fast towards the, the reason why we're here today. And this is the keynote of Sandra de Blanca. Sander is the managing director of BAM Infra Consult. Um, and, and the talk is roughly how does BAM Infra use uh, digitalization in road construction to achieve sustainability goals. And uh, Sander will talk uh, soon. So I think I, I will let him do the talking rather than describe what he will be doing. Sander, welcome. I'll stop Thank sharing you, my screen. Yep. So you can go to your PowerPoint. Yeah, I will take over the... Um... Thank you. Just to make sure. Okay, so thank you, Nikki. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm delighted to um, to to get the opportunity to share something um, about the BAM journey uh, so far. Uh, our mission is building a sustainable tomorrow, and the subtitle to that is that we enhance people's lives by creating a sustainable environment. Um, and on the picture here, you see uh, some of the construction material we have been already using to. Uh, reduce the energy on the construction site. So my, my talk today is, uh, uh, is called From Vision to Focus. Uh, but first, let me introduce you to BOM and uh, what we are all about and what we do. So this is a uh, short video to introduce BOM.
run fast and don't stop at the end. You can be anything you want. So <clears throat> that's a short introduction on uh, on BAM. Uh, my name is indeed Sander Den Blanke. I'm uh, the managing director of Infra Consult, which is the uh, advice or consultancy and engineering department of BAM Infra. And I'm also the managing director of BAM Infra Asset Management, which is also a, a separate business unit, which basically is focusing on everything which is on the front side of large projects, large infrastructure projects, and everything which is on the on the inside of large infrastructure projects during the maintenance phase. So everything we do wrong at the beginning will pick up afterwards and will will be confronted again with it uh, uh, in, at that stage. And so, for example, uh, we design um, the uh, the uh, a very famous dike which is called the Afla Dike, a 32 kilometers long dike in the Netherlands. And after this has been renovated and uh, uh, reshaped. We will also do the maintenance for another uh, 15 years uh, with that same company. Uh, so that's me. Uh, but enough about me. I'm going to tell you something about uh, the company, Company Bam in, Bam uh, Group. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have uh, strong presence in Europe, uh, and mainly focusing currently in a new strategy on uh, Netherlands and on the UK and Ireland. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's for European standards, relatively strong great company uh, but we did decided to uh, slim down the organization a little bit so which basically means that the organization in Belgium and Germany are being managed for value uh, which in the end will probably lead to a uh, to a sold, sold out of those two companies and we'll be focusing on the long run on the Netherlands and the UK and Ireland um, uh, and we have a vision a vision which is connected to uh, the UN Nations Sustainability Development Goals. Um, and we also report about that, of course. We were quite happy with receiving the title of being the most sustainable contractor of uh, 2021 in the Netherlands. Uh, and that's all have to do with metrics and with data in measuring our progress. Uh, our um, strategy is fit and basically linked to um, a few of the uh, uh, 11, uh, so, 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 sorry, 15, 18 UN, UN Nations sustainability goals. The first one, of course, is about good health and well being. For the, the fourth, about quality education because we need good people. Uh, we're looking for decent work and, and economic growth, otherwise, we can't invest and we can't sustain ourselves. Uh, and for infra, sp specifically, we're focusing on industry, innovation, and infrastructure in and uh, linked to. Uh, sustainable cities and communities. So our goals are linked to those uh, goals. For example, we measure how we, uh, how many people lives we improve, how we safety, uh, how safety works, how many circular products we develop. And the achievement of these objectives is also verified externally, which is becoming more and more important also as a uh, stock listed company like, uh, like BAM. So it's all science-based target and measuring uh, along the stock is going, going forward, um, which is important. Specifically for the BAM Infra Netherlands, we have developed a, uh, a sustainability roadmap um, focusing on circular concepts and on sustainable construction. In 2021, which is already last year, we, uh, we have focusing on winning sustainable projects where sustainability is part of the quality criteria. We are, of course, a projects company, so we need projects to deliver our business and to deliver uh, impact and deliver value. Otherwise, we can't sustain. So we have a, taken a very strong decision to only look for uh, sustainable projects. Uh, we also have decided to introduce the so-called material passport, which is a digital passport, uh, which contains basically all the materials, elements, products, uh, and all the, uh, the key uh, uh, metadata of those materials in those projects we deliver and we maintain. Why is this important? Because we need to know 
when the end of lifetime of those material processes so that we can reuse um, those materials and products in a next project. This is important for BAM, but this is it, it basically important for the entire industry. In 2026, we want to uh, reach the very important mile, milestone to, um, uh, to be able to work emission zero on the construction site and also to have 100% renewable energy, which is uh, at this moment more doable, seems like. Um, and this is a very strict milestone. I'll come to that later with a few examples. In 20, 2030, we are focusing on uh, aiming for 50% less primary construction material and also 50% less CO2 in sync with most of our clients' objectives. And this might be probably the most hard uh, milestone for us to achieve, and I'll come to that later in a bit more, a bit more detail. Um, circularity, um, we can use, we can reuse material as a basis material, of course, uh, but basically, and that's, that's already what we're doing quite a lot in, uh, in recycling of material, uh, but in principle, if you want to create value and if you don't want to break down the value of a product, you probably need to reuse the product itself and not to break it down into materials again. So one of the stronger elements we have put in is to focus on circularity. Um, and we have prepared, for example, a manual for our uh, designers uh, company for InfraConsult. How do you do, how do you implement or how do you integrate circular design principles into the design process? And that's quite different because at this moment, we are still uh, based, uh, basing our designs on traditional ways of production, basically um, accepting or trusting that all the materials are, will be there now and in the future. And that's probably not gonna happen because we're gonna run out of primary construction materials quite quickly. Um, and of course, we are focusing on products, on actual products, not only on process, but also on products. For example, on the concrete granulate in, in concrete, and we are in favor of a risk-based application of the granulate. And we're now applying this in elements, hardening, and yet too little constructive A37, and we'll be testing ground for a new type of asphalt. The asphalt is very open asphalt, uh, which is called a ZOAP, a zero open asphalt beton, which is a Dutch expression and probably Nikki knows the exact right English translation of that. But it consists of 95% of recycled material of old asphalt. So we're now, now reaching 100% of circularity there. We also found ways to use uh, components of uh, existing asphalts. Uh, uh, as a product for the, the, the actual uh, uh, foundation of the asphalt itself. Uh, and of course, we're looking at the production of asphalt uh, in the asphalt uh, plants to see how we can reduce the emissions coming out of the uh, chimneys. Uh, a few other uh, product examples are the X-Block. Uh, it's a concrete product, uh, a concrete without any steel in it. Uh, and we can make those concrete blocks uh, which are basically uh, uh, making sure that we are uh, protected against high waters and high waves uh, from a very low uh, carbon concrete mix. And even we can uh, produce them with zero um, CO2 uh, uh, emission. Another one is uh, uh, called the compact ACODL, which is a guide rail fully out of wood or timber, better said. Uh, and there's a lot of guide rails in, uh, in our highways. So it, that's a very uh, a big step forward if you can use timber in those kind of applications. So as you can see, we are uh, optimizing products. We are reusing materials. We're also looking for new kind of types of cement in those X blocks and using other types of materials for traditional uh, structures like uh, guide rails. Um, we cannot do this alone. So BAM is, of course, a, a very strong and big company, but we need co-makership. So we have set up a lot of collaboration, and, and I'm not going to name all of them, but uh, it's very important. And these are only Dutch-based collaborations. Uh, and in the Europe European Union, there are also some very important uh, collaboration platforms. And I encourage everybody to make use of those, because those are the platforms when we can connect with supply chain, where you can connect with your uh, 
components and with your uh, competitors, with your clients, to actually talk about these developments without having any contextual uh, 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 um, restrictions in an open conversation. Uh, and we are uh, actively contributing to those uh, co-makerships platforms. Uh, some examples um, for projects like uh, a project which is called the Vechtal Verbinding, which is in the province of Overijssel. Uh, and that's now one and a half years ago, so we have introduced a material passport on new pro projects. And basically this is a digital passport or a digital database, which basically contains all the data of all the elements in this area, uh, uh, which can be, uh, my voice is a bit crashy because I'm having a bit of a cold. So that's what you're probably hearing. Uh, we're talking about material passports, which is a digital passport, uh, which basically contains uh, all the materials and of products and also the uh, the status and the life um, um, uh, the lifetime of these uh, materials in the projects and also when uh, lifetime comes to an end to make sure that uh, once uh, lifetime comes to an end it needs to be replaced or maintained that uh, some um, the, 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 the maintenance manager is being informed about this uh, so that maintenance can take place or replacement and in, uh, in the best case, if um, a, an asset or an object has been broken down, then we're trying to uh, reuse the product itself, not the material, uh, in another project or in the same product, even better, uh, to make sure that we get to a high standard of uh, circularity. And this material password is a digital password, and this is key to actually accelerate and enable this way of uh, uh, managing uh, managing strategy. Without a digital platform, this is just simply not possible. So uh, one of the one of the uh, um, recommendations I have for all of you is to make sure that at least you uh, work with the material password in everything you're going to do in, in Sweden in the near future. Um, next step is about emission zero, uh, an example. Um, I just want to make sure that you are there. Yeah. Um, so we aim to be emission free on the construction side by 2026, which I already uh, told. Uh, but this requires a substantial investment in equipment, both electrical and hydrogen. And for example, we need about two, let's say three to five percent of the total revenues of Balminfra to actually make sure that we reach this stage in 2026. Uh, and if you then talk about profit or margins, this is the same kind of margins we are currently are making as a construction company. So you could imagine that three or five percent of your total revenues is just an enormous amount, which basically will just um, uh, blow away the entire margin for the coming five years. Typically, something we're not going to decide to ourselves if if we're not going to get any help or funding or subsidies from the government. We are, of course, looking to alternative equipment as well. Uh, uh, and uh, currently we're rebuilding that or building it ourselves because equipment is not um, available yet in the, the amounts we probably need it by 2026. So you can see here two examples, which is the uh, hybrid uh, uh, truck uh, for doing uh, CPTs and electric roller, which is both is being built entirely by BAM. And yes, of course, with the help from suppliers, but the entire assemblation is done by BAM personnel. At this moment, we are in uh, great conversations with the supply chain, with the uh, larger uh, uh, companies who are now uh, helping us out to deliver these type of electrical vehicles or hybrid vehicles to make sure that we have not one or one roller, but that we have multiple of these uh, assets in our uh, construction site materials so that we can deliver the projects in a fully, fully emission zero level. Because at this moment, we only have one roller, we only have one hybrid truck. Yeah, yes, those are the first. Um, and, and we've put our money and effort in it to inspire others and to lead the way. Uh, and we're now seeing that others are taking the same route, which is uh, hopeful and also encouraging. I have, by the way, a scoop. Uh, maybe you've already seen it in the news because we have just launched a fully electric asphalt equipment um, for uh, delivering uh, highways in the, in the Netherlands, which has been launched uh, last week. We're quite proud of it, uh, but that's just also another example 
of uh, uh, yeah, vehicles we need to deliver on emission zero goals. Um, next to uh, circularity, next to emission zero, we also are focusing on uh, reuse of construction waste. It seems like an obvious one, but we are producing a lot of construction waste, which is leading to, yeah, to, to, uh, to, to let's say, breakdown of value. Um, so what we're doing, uh, we are, uh, we, we are making sure that we prevent that materials are being released and uh, can no longer be reused to a high standard. So uh, think in design about the prevention of waste. Uh, so we have to design the process of waste. Um, I already talked about the circular uh, thinking process or design process. We have to ensure as few as materials as possible. So lower the materials is of course a very simple but very effective manner to lower the construction uh, waste. Uh, so determining optimal order of quantities, making agreements with suppliers about reducing packaged materials, uh, and also on high quality reuse of released materials by, for example, determining uh, the reusability of materials before materials are being released, demolition plan, materials released from plan, etc. And among, among other things, um, also visual inspection and measure are taken, uh, put in place to actually measure if we are reaching this, uh, this goal. Uh, last but not least, we're focusing on the reuse of materials at work, uh, where possible, of course, to reduce transport uh, uh, activities, because uh, every transport activity is leading to an e uh, CO2 emission. So if you can reduce that, then that's going to help uh, quite a lot. Or, for example, Schiphol, uh, which is one of the maintenance contacts we have for the coming uh, 10 years, we are getting to a level of 99% of reuse of material which is ex excellent and also quite helpful to actually show that this is possible. And Schiphol in itself is a small city, uh, you can compare it to that. What we do need, we do need the buy-in of our clients and we do need the buy-in of our supply chain because as a general context, you cannot do this alone. You need to team up and discuss this with all the stakeholders to get to this level. Uh, last but not least, um, the, and this is the most difficult one to, uh, to aim to, 50% uh, less of materials in 2030. Um, and we have uh, highlighted two examples, the uh, quay walls in Amsterdam, which is a big, big uh, challenge for uh, the municipality of Amsterdam. The quay walls are being, uh, well, they're already end of lifetime a few years ago. Uh, and we have uh, developed a strategy to reuse that to about 30% of the materials uh, and also about 20% of materials from other projects. So in total, this is 50%. Uh, but ideally, ideally, uh, you have to focus on 50% of the release from the same project because getting it from a different project leads to transportation activities and not really to a CO2 emission. So, but in, in, in essence, this is leading to a 50% less primary material, but it's, it's hard work to get to this level and it is not easy. So you have to be very uh, inventive and innovative to get at the level, um, uh, but it is possible, uh, but 50% is a, is a high number. Uh, if you look at 50% less CO2, um, there are a few innovations we have applied in pilots, for example, the Watway road surface, which considers uh, solar panels uh, on top of the asphalt. Uh, and of course, uh, we are promoting electric driving or lease cars. So we recently um, launched the lease car uh, policy for BAM Group, for the entire group. So all the electric, sorry, all the lease cars for BAM will be electrical probably by 2023 already. And it seems like an easy one, but if you have a big fleet of company cars, this is a major step towards uh, a more uh, or a less CO2 uh, world. Uh, so a, a few uh, of the examples. Um, a project in Hilversum, uh, also reaching a 47% reduction of environmental impact. This is a bit. This is a project which has uh, been started a while ago, so it's not reaching to a 50% less primary material. Uh, but there was a benchmark in place, so the client has uh, put in a reference design and, and compared to the reference design, <coughs> we consider that as the benchmark, we were able to reduce the environmental impact with 47%. Uh, and that's already has been done so far and we won this award, which is called the Sustainable Pearl Award. 
uh, and he, he can see the team who are quite proud of what they have achieved. Um, in addition, there's quite some uh, measures needed to make sure that you limit construction traffic in, in the city, so the inner cities. Uh, you need to be aware of cutting trees uh, and also uh, uh, make sure that you develop rural, uh, new rural initiatives uh, in the uh, uh, other locations around the project. So you, you have to compensate as well for what you're doing in the inner cities. Some current initiatives which are uh, getting us to a 50% reduction is the reuse of temporary sinking basins, so which have been already in place. When they use, they reuse them, they need a bit of lift up, but uh, we're happy we're doing that. Uh, and of course, we're doing an exploration of uh, circular bitch, uh, pedestrian bitches uh, to see if we can get that uh, in place. And uh, I mentioned already, but the emission zero construction sites is a typical example on, on Hilversum, which is a pearl project for us as well. If you want to know more about that, we can deliver that information later as well. The step towards sustainability, because that sustainability is the goal of BOM. Uh, creating a sustainable uh, environment is the, is the mission statement of BOM, but we cannot do that uh, in itself. You need to, and that's already what I've talked about, you need to think about in a design, you need to focus on the asset management, you need to focus on the construction, the way you do construction. Uh, and and the enable the most important enable is digital is the digital possibility. So I'm now stepping towards what we're doing on digital, uh, and we can see digital as an enabler to reach the goal for sustainability. And that's a very important bridge towards the next part of the story I'm going to tell. So digital strategy which put in place is to first to prove did bomb ditches reputation in not in our own perspective because that's irrelevant uh, others need to see that we want to become employer of choice because we need new people with new uh, bright minds to uh, to bring us forward uh, we are uh, focusing on improving the reliability of the business basically lowering uh, failure costs and of course creating value but also accelerating our learning ability. And last but not least, and that's where we are entering the sustainability area, accelerate our impact, impact on sustainability. Um, a, a few pillars we have identified, of course, on the front side, digital design and engineering, <clears throat> everything which has to do with parametric design, with creating a material passport, uh, the implementation of digital construction techniques, uh, 3D BIM, uh, and the enrichment of that uh, uh, in, in, the, in the lights of, of planning and cost uh, control. Um, uh, digital asset management, and this is what I'm gonna talk about in the next part of this keynote. Uh, and later on, I come down to the data-driven decision-making, common data, fund, which I will be uh, picking up. Uh, so I will be focusing in the next part on digital asset management. Um, so I think it's important to know that did you know that the road network of the Netherlands is one of the most dense network in the world. Uh, we have approximately 140,000 kilometers of public roads. Um, we keep Netherlands in motion. Uh, uh, there's a nice slogan of Nederland Transportland, uh, but that comes with, um, oops, um, but that comes with a, uh, uh, Okay, um, uh, with, with an important uh, uh, requirement because we need to maintain our roads. And as well, we contribute to a better ac accessibility of cities and region, and we increase also the safety of traffic flows. <clears throat> and we believe that by adopting these dig digital technologies, oh, this is going quite, there's, there's, a, there's a timer on it. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll go next to the... Uh, uh, so about three and a half years ago, we started our digital journey based on asset management theme. The aim is, of the theme is to create a distinctive uh, distinctiveness with asset management by developing new products, services. And for example, we entered into a strategic partnership with Microsoft Orange Next for AI, uh, artificial intelligence. Microsoft's voice knowledge and experience of AI cloud services and the application of Azure platform of Orange Next for its knowledge of about AI developments and handling data of hubs. And our role as Bamba to bring in specific domain knowledge and build IE experience. Uh, so we're dealing with outdated infrastructure, we're seeing significant changes in infrastructure uses, so safety, sustainability, more frequent and busy usage, 
Uh, and of course, the emergence of many technologies like uh, in Internet of Things, robotics, and AI. And those three elements uh, is, is a driver of uh, the uh, digital asset management journey we have started. I'm going to show you a small video which basically gives a highlight of what we're doing and where we're coming from. Every infrastructural object exists to serve a purpose. It shows you the way, lights your way, generates energy, or contributes in another way to a well-functioning and livable society. Due to the vast increase of pressure on the infrastructure, there's a demand for better and smarter assets and an effective and efficient management and maintenance organization. How do we ensure that assets optimally fulfill their purpose? Fortunately, the technological possibilities have also increased exponentially, which clears the way for unparalleled innovations in the field of digital asset management. BAM Infra Netherlands joined forces with partners Microsoft and Orange Next to translate the joint vision of the future of asset management into daily reality, thus paving the road towards the next milestone in the management and maintenance of infrastructure. Using satellite images and data retrieved from cars with scanning equipment, we map out entire areas, and with artificial intelligence, we analyze the amount, location, and condition of, amongst others, roads, traffic signs, guardrails, and public lighting. By extracting data from assets, we can create digital twins and learn to understand them better. With artificial intelligence, we simulate their future so we can discover what awaits them and what we can do to help them optimally fulfill their purpose. We let them communicate with other assets and with vehicles and combine their data streams to acquire new insights and possibilities for optimization. Now, that's an asset. So um, uh, the four steps of our digital transformation, which I uh, wanted to highlight, um, uh, and we've used this framework to actually share uh, also our experiences here, which could be helpful for, for others. We have changed two things in the way we work, <clears throat> the way we think from implicit human knowledge driven mindset to a data driven mindset. The way we deliver business from production and utilization rate approach towards a service delivery approach. And as a result of the change, we created digital services to provide digital asset management. So this is where we are. Um, we have defined four groups of digital services. So we have digital asset scans, connected assets, intelligent asset monitoring, and smart maintenance. Often the question comes up, what kind of infrastructure do we have in the public area? Questions such as, what kind of assets do I have, or how many assets do I have, what are they located, and what's the condition of the assets? I often raise. And, and, and I'm going back to the, the front side of my story. These material passports are not in place yet. So these scanning and connecting the assets are quite important currently to make sure that we understand those assets better. Uh, so that we are able to extend their lifetime and manage them properly. And the aim of digital asset scan is to provide a digital copy. Uh, a lot of public infrastructure such as roads, viaducts, guide trails are passive or, uh, or not connected per se. And the objective of connected assets is actually to connect assets with the digital world. And it allows us to have better understanding of the conditions of an asset. Having a digital asset scan and connected assets we will be able to gain actionable insights via intelligent monitoring like predictive maintenance, and in the end allows us and our customers to perform smart maintenance. We have about four services currently which we are able to deliver. Uh, asphalt scanning, guide trail scanning, installations, um, and a dynamic platform of for uh, 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 lightning, for lifting power, and I'm forgetting the English word for it. Um, uh, I think it's road, um, uh, road signs, road signs. Uh, 
so those are the service security which we have in place. Um, uh, but that doesn't come easily. That doesn't come easily. The second transformation we went through is a transformation of the way we work. Not only did we change by adopting new digital technologies, we also changed our maintenance process. And last but not least, the mindset of our people. It was important to create a mindset that digital changes are not a threat to them, but a support to each individual, which allows us to improve our business. And I want to elaborate a little bit on the effects of this step. By example, the inspection and maintenance of asphalt roads. Uh, it will be shown to you in the coming minute uh, about what that means to asphalt uh, inspections. So the global impact of our solution is not only for the bomb, but also for us as citizens to be faster at your destination, safer at your destination, and basically uh, less congestion uh, by traveling. To be designed, built, and maintain infrastructure assets like bridges, tunnels, and viaducts. Send a car outside with a 360 camera, making recordings with every angle, Upload the recording to the Azure platform, analyze it, and the results are presented to the inspector to verify whether they are good or wrong. What took months for the inspector to do, now is turned into days. The Azure-based solution gives us early insights in the condition of an asset. And by having early insights, we are able to do predictive maintenance and avoid emergency repairs. So what I really like about the solution is that it uses AI through cognitive services and improves the quality of the asphalts. But not only that, it really saves lives. What we also will do is together with Orange Next and Microsoft, develop AI as a service and offer the AI algorithms towards potential clients. So we can detect damage on asphalt, but we can do more than that. Image analysis solutions like this can be used in any industry that uses cameras. So think of CCTVs, drone footage, smartphones even, traffic cam footage, it's, it's very broad. So we're done? Yeah. <laughs> um, so using digital technology is not a goal in itself. Uh, and I want to you know, quickly gain some insights in order to improve safety and availability of infrastructure. We centralize asset data and we make it approachable by a geographical viewer. We create dashboards to quickly gain insights in asset conditions and performance. And we also incorporate a domain knowledge in order to be able to provide expected future maintenance activities and costs, and also predicting the end of lifetime. We created the digital platform, which allows us to provide digital services towards our projects and our customers. And we have experienced several benefits. Much more efficient and effective way of working, but took months to do by an inspector, which was already explained in the video, can be reduced in days, two days, sorry. Uh, time saving up to 80%, cost reduction up to 50%. With this new way of working, we can provide steady quality. Digital technology will not get tired and are not subjected to emotions or at least quality feelings. Therefore, the results are not based on individual judgment or analysis. The third benefit is related to the continued continuity, 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 sorry, uh, scalability. Our cloud solutions is easy to scale up and down in order to match the quest of our customers. Not only do we have operational efficiency, by adopting this new way of working, we are able to increase the safety and availability of the infrastructure. Our objective is to provide digital asset management services not only for our internal purposes, but especially for our customers. We aim to help our customers to better utilize the infrastructure network while improving the safety and hindrance, and of course, the ability to uh, come up with a more sustainable approach to the lifetime of assets. And the focus of asset management, which is our DNA, so we're focusing on sustainability and data-driven and we need to be connected, not only connected by asset, but also connected in the supply chain and with our co-makers. Last but not least, I'm showing a, a small case, uh, which is called the Adapt Guide Trail. Uh, and I'm going to run through that quite, uh, quite quickly uh, because of the time left of this uh, keynote. Um, so what's the problem here? Um, working overnight with ongoing traffic, which could be unsafe, uh, there's health issues, there's traffic disruption, <clears throat> it's very labor intensive, 
with roadblocks, sufficient inspection, administration, and also a very important insufficient capacity. A lot of variation in quality inspection and also a very subjective measurement of methods. Uh, and it's open to individual interpretation or random measurements. So what have we done? We have mapped out the process of what we're doing. So on top, you see the picture is a work process for inspecting a normal guidetrain. From requesting video recordings to performance maintenance from left to right. Four steps of this, which is called data access analysis in uh, process uh, reporting has been digitized, whereby AI has become the engine of the analysis part. With this move, and I'm going to show it, with this move, we have been able to reduce the lead time from weeks to even months to just a few days to at most one week. Here you can see that in practice. data are just collected in one fly, uh, fly off this highway by a drone or an airplane instead of a, a simple car just going across these highways. So very effective and very smart. Using di digital technology is not an end in itself. We want to have a quick insight so that we can improve the security, availability, and of course, uh, extend the lifetime of infrastructure assets. We centralize the asset data make it approachable via, via a geographical viewer. We create dashboards to quickly gain insights as to conditions and performance, and also incorporate domain knowledge in order to be able to provide expected future maintenance activities and costs. We created a digital platform which allows us to provide digital services towards our projects and our customers. Here you can see a few examples um, what we have in place. And uh, not only uh, of uh, <coughs> lightning poles, but also the underground infrastructure down uh, the asphalt in the ground. Uh, we have uh, uh, the ability to scan those and to uh, get a view of what's on the ground of infrastructure is, uh, is there. So we can bring that also to the asset management platform. I'm going to skip this. Um, so if you're basically in this journey, <coughs> journey uh, you also want to uh, celebrate success and success we already have, and not only by winning projects, but also by some winning some great awards or being the runner up in uh, famous awards like the COBA Award and the Adopt Guide Trail uh, uh, and also the Innovation Award. So and the reason why we're doing it is to also show to others and also to our own people that we're proud of what we're doing and that we are successful in delivering the, that digital strategy. Uh, it doesn't come by itself. Uh, so a few lessons learned when you want to bring to the table. <clears throat> you need to have a clear vision and strategy and stick to it. Um, you also need to mobilize your ambassadors in your organization uh, because those are the front runners and those ambassadors will be helping your company your organization or your project as that taking the next step. Make sure you do these developments in the business. So don't disconnect this from the business and look at actual clients and customers who are looking for these kind of services. Think about how we think normally, traditional, and think about the process and map out the process you are going through and see what you can optimize. Understand how you do business and change that. Uh, uh, and also create a common data environment. If you don't have a common data environment, this is not going to fly. And last but not least, build an ecosystem. You're not going to succeed alone. You need suppliers, you need strategic partners, you need your clients going forward. A common data, data environment is what I said 
uh, and you probably want to know more about that uh, very shortly. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of different applications. You have to come to one set of applications. Uh, you, you need to come from offline and, and unsecure data to online and secure that. A very important step also for our clients. From hard to find uh, and unreliable to easy to find and accessible to structured version of control and data. And this is what we call the common data environment. And of course, there are pitfalls. And I'm coming to an end of my presentations. Um, if you look at AI as a linear process, then you're probably going to fail. At least that's what we did in the beginning. So this is going in circles. Um, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, um, a proof of concept, the POG, is just simple a demonstration of a product itself. It's not the actual service yet. The service is providing paid work for clients, which is a totally different uh, ballgame. What is also very important is data, scalable data quality. Many organizations have a lot of data, um, but they're not scalable or the quality of the data is poor. And most of the data you have probably needs some uh, addition and, uh, and application. Um, I started off with having a clear focus. It is very easy to lose focus because there's so many fun things to develop, uh, but you have to focus on business and what is actually working for your clients and delivering value. There's a high cost of failure. So if you, if you invest, uh, these investments are pretty high. Uh, so I always predict fail fast. If you fail fast, start up again and make sure you, uh, you improve. Avoid established structures. So don't get into the idea that you, within a large organization, you can do that. <clears throat> Create a startup environment where the ambassador front runners can connect to uh, this, this topic and can accelerate the development. I hope that this is helpful for you. I hope that this is inspirational for what you try to achieve in Sweden. Uh, this was my keynote and I'm happy to receive any questions for you. Thank you, Sandler. That was a very nice and extensive. I have a lot of questions. I just want to say to those participating, if you have questions, put it in the chat. Even if it's in Swedish, I can translate it.